wrestling. So a massively altered Mont Saint Anne course. You can see the start loop marked with a dotted line, then they head out on the race track proper up these really, really steep climbs and then into torturously steep rock sections in the woods. Easily one of the hardest laps of the year. We have had 200, sorry, 2.9 kilometers in length. And loops back around in this little nibbly section, heads back towards the start finish straight down into that wee woods, wee punchy climb back out to the finish line. And we are racing in Mont saint -Anne, Quebec. Victor Koretsky fast off the line, Tom Pidcock even faster, Chris Blevins just getting out dragged by Charlie Aldridge Charlie on the right hand Aldridge. side. Charlie Aldridge very fast, he has the horsepower. Aldridge takes the whole shot as they swing right out yep. onto the start loop. First in the first corner. Oh, and they head up the climb on the start loop just to find the numbers out. Simon Andreessen Simon is Andreas, up around yeah. inside him. What a but also, Alan Hatterley. I mean, the three uh, Cannondale riders in front of the race. The three Cannondale factory racing bikes lying is third now on the right hand side there. Schwarzbauer yeah. in the Purple of Canyon Collective up alongside them. Lucas Schwarzbauer also a good start again as normally most of the time leading in the beginning of the race. And as we've seen in the place. races all day long, a good Christopher start. Christopher Levens on the fourth place, now overtaking next to Lucas Schwarzbauer. A good start loop essential here because you want to head into the lap proper with clear air for these descents this long. They still can carry on their speed, but so many rocks, like sharp rocks. Back on the bike. Yeah, Tom Pitcock will overtaking him after that uh, tech zone. Where they are, where Matthias Flücker is right now almost, just a few turns. Well, if you're going to have a puncture, this is when you'd want to have it at the start of the race. We saw it in the women's race. There's Aldridge and third. Flukiger's in. How quick can they do it? Steps back from the bike, has a drink. Pitcock inherits the lead off the race. The axle comes out of that Tumas. Pitcock. It always takes too long for the rider. What was it, Sam Gaze? How, how, how was it he put it last week? I'd keep a bit of tension on Pit, my chain. Pit, Pitcock, I think, <laughs> yeah, every race again. The motivation. Flukiger right back on the back of Pitcock wow. now. Yeah, after his flat tire, he lost at least 20 seconds with that cha wheel change. And now back in the lead of the race. He might take it a bit more carefully now, precisely in, in really, these downhills. Really, really difficult, Bart. We've mentioned it a bit today. Yeah, Whenever you get those shoes no, filled it, with mud yeah. and you're on and off the bike, in and out the pedals, pedals filled with mud. Yeah, it is. But on the bike again here. It's still steep. Look at the conditions. Right Look how rotted and sticky and just horrible this racetrack in Mont saint has got. There's that tricky little entrance that Simon Andreasen got wrong. Matthias Flukiger has a trials turn his way up on lap rock. Look at Flukiger go though. Of course he is. There is Matthias Flukiger. Pitcock right back on the back of him now as they approach this back marker. But Thomas uh, Frischnack, the team manager of Nino Schroeder, will inform him as well about the situations, the positions, the points and the overall title. Yep, Scherer made his elite debut, his pro debut on that Scott team. Off Frischneck, and the two of them have been pretty much inseparable ever since. Is Tom Pidcock about to do a Matthias Flugiger on Matthias Flugiger and overtake him on the way into this descent? Oh, sorry, it kicks on, doesn't it? There's a little climb as they turn into the woods here. Flugiger up out of the saddle says, no thanks. Yeah, not off his bike anymore. It means it's drying quickly. Oh, he has the skills, the power. Down that, oh, Pitcock just hesitation at the top of it. <laughs> That's the last place in this course you want to have a crash. They're waiting for him. Yeah, let's have a look. Bart's got the stopwatch on. 
Flugiger grabs a drink, steps back from the bike, lets the mechanic gap black go to work, one wheel out. At least they have more experience now. The gilet's off, he oh, means yeah, business yeah, now. Yeah, 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 more here. He's back on the bike before the axle is fully in, and he is right. gone. Yeah, again, less than 20 seconds again. What 19 a again. change from Gav Black. Nine, Take a boy. 19 again. And what a racetrack it's provided. There's the man in second place, Matthias Flukiger. Two flat tiles. Unbelievable. But the man in the lead, Tom Pidcock, is really ratcheting up the pressure. He'll look across and see him. Yep, fill in this place as ever. Tom Pidcock heads down the asphalt straight to that little loop in the woods and he'll head back up on the other side of it. Pre-jumps that for the last time. Another one. Another one, why not? Heads down into the right-hander. One turn to go now. Then he'll punch up a little climb, hang left slightly and head for the start-finish. And here a couple of battles are still going on. There's Jordan Saru in 10th. The you know, battle for second still rages. Yeah, this, 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 the battle for second place, that's still going on. Jordan Saru also a flat tire earlier in the race. And here he comes though, Tom Pidcock kicked us off in the Czech Republic with a win and he's going to end the year for us in Canada with another win. Tom Pidcock takes an incredible win in Monsey and Anne on one of the trickiest, most difficult days of the Cross Country World Cup. He's done, <laughs> he's had enough mountain biking for a while, but who can blame him, what an entertainer. Meanwhile, Anton Kupo overtaking Nino Schutter again. It's still all shaking out in terms of the UCI World Cup overall. For which position this him. is, is it 13, 14? There's Matthias Flugiger, a brave, brave ride. For Flukiger. seconds only. Only 26 seconds back without those two punctures. What could have been? The strong rides. Garini has been superb again today. Big, big ride last time out in Snowshoe, West Virginia. And now proves again. that it was no flash in the pan. Garini, home in third place for Bixis. Great ride. One minute 31 back off the leader, Pidcock. Pidcock takes the win by 26 seconds in the end from Matthias Flukiger, then Marcel Garini, superb in third. Tito and Carew, Litcher, great results for both of them as well. Andreasen, Aldridge, Debo, Saru, Schwarzbar. A real mix up of the big names in that top 10. Then it was the naughty Grio, Cooper, Nino Scherter. Grasping the overall title in 14. Forster, Bouchard, Colombo, Vidari, Martins, Blums. Thomas Pidcock, what a race that was here in Monster. And you started the World Cup season with a win and you finished it with a win in your World Champion uh, jersey. How good does that feel? Yeah, I, I was pretty motivated to get a, to win in to win in this jersey for the end of the year. Um, but yeah, this week was was difficult. You know, it's been a long long season. I was I was tired. It was a bit of a, a struggle. You know, like Sam didn't start last week. He said he didn't finish. Is uh, you know, all came came uh, fall on top of him at the end of the season. And Evie now this week. So you know, it's uh, yeah. I was also feeling it, but. You kind of just have to, uh, yeah, just keep, keep a solid head and... and uh... It was a great contest between you and Matthias Fluking. I know there's a lot of respect between you two as riders, but how much do you relish kind of battling it out? Yeah, we've had quite a few battles, to be honest. I mean, the Olympics, he was chasing me down for an hour. Here he was, uh, he kept me under pressure. I, uh, I made a few mistakes. I, I kind of let him lead. I didn't really want to fight him. Um, in the descents, I didn't mind that he was in in front because I could go also down the descents faster following him. Um, but then when he made a mistake, I I like 
fell off a fell off a rock on one of the things, and then yeah, he, that's where he got the gap with two laps to go. And um, also the first lap with this jump at the bottom, I kind of didn't have enough speed, so I had to get off and go around it. And uh, yeah, people were shouting at me, but. Um, yeah, I didn't. I, I tried to make as little mistakes as possible, and also, uh, yeah, conserve the bike, you know, because Mat Matthias was flying down the sense like a madman, but he he also punctured twice. So uh, yeah. And what happened with your bike? Because there were a few uh, situations where you were talking to the technical team on the sidelines. Uh, with was there a flat in the end? No, no, my bike's fine. Well, that is great news. Now we're heading into an Olympic year. What's next for you after this? Oh, I'm going. That's it. I'm going on holiday now. Normally, normally I still go last lap full gas, but today I just couldn't be asked. I was like sprinting up the hills, even though if even if I'm going to win, but you know, I'm going on holiday now. I enjoy your holiday. Well done. Thank you. Shorter then takes it by 40 points. His ninth from Flukiger Schwartzbar, Creo, Dubow, Forster, Haverly, Pitcock, Blooms. Just 10 points between Saru and Flukiger for second place. Descalu, Garini, Koretsky after that superb end of the season. Then Brido, Sherman, Cooper, Litcher, another Brido, and Alban. Luca Brido getting the best of the Brido brothers and the family bragging rights. One in Mont Saint Anne at the end of the season, two of the biggest races. In the UCI World Cup, won by the man from Leeds. Bart reckons this is the last time we'll see him on a mountain bike before the Paris Olympics next year.